And what I want to do is give you a little bit of background. So I went to the University of Memphis or Memphis State University, and I used to cook for hundreds of people. I did all the Greek picnics. I cooked for all the boys. I was the survival person when it came to eating. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two different levels of cooking, but both of them are very easy and will help you survive in college. So let me show you the first thing. These are what most college students know about. They're called Raymond noodles, right? And unfortunately, you know, if you got to eat them, that means you're at the bottom of the barrel, but they will get you over, all right? They come in beef, they come in chicken, and there's lots of things that you can do to these in college. I'm going to go over that in a second, but I'm going to show you a couple of things. So remember, Raymond noodles, beef, chicken, creamy chicken, shrimp flavor, they got them all. They're about 23 cents a pack, but what they will do is make sure that you eat if you don't have food. Now, a lot of times you may have a meal plan or something, but if you're in the dorm and it's a snowstorm in the middle of the winter and you've got the choice between walking over to the cafeteria or sitting in your dorm room, a lot of times you'll choose a pack of Raymond noodles. All right, so just remember that. I want to go over a couple of pieces of basic equipment that is really important when you're in the dorm. Number one, try to get you some good microwave dishes. This is just a basic microwave bowl. But the important part is that if you're cooking some Raymond noodles and you put it in a basic styrofoam or plastic bowl, like one of these, it's gonna melt in the microwave. And then all of your juices and everything will run all over the sink and all over the microwave. So you want a good plastic microwave bowl. This is a microwave bowl. These are microwave dishes. They're just basic microwave dishes. You can buy them at Walmart or Target. You can get them on Amazon. They come with lids. These are really bad. Jerry? Sorry about that. One of the, sorry about that. One of the bros was calling. I had to cut him off. Okay. So these are good because they allow you to cook heavier items if you're Oh, Kamika. Okay, I'm sorry, bros. Somebody keeps calling, guys. My apologies. These allow you to cook like steak and chicken and other items without worrying about them again getting absorbed in the plastic dishes that you cook them in. This is a short microwave dish with the lid. This is your microwave plate. So these are basic things that are really good to have when you're going to college because, again, you can cook in them. They don't melt. They don't destroy the taste of your food, and they're fairly inexpensive, okay? So again, that's the first thing. The second thing is this. No matter what you cook in college, you're going to need some seasons. Now, you can go to the grocery store and buy expensive seasons, but if you're on a budget, you want to go to Walmart, and there's some basic seasons that you want to get. This is your garlic powder. This is like 90 cents at Walmart. Sometimes you can go to the dollar store, and you can get them two for a dollar garlic powder, get you some salt, and then get you some type of a season oil. Sometimes it's lorry, but for the most purpose, it's just called everyday uh, season oil, okay? All right. The other thing that I recommend you get is some teriyaki sauce. So if you ever go to Benihana's or to a Japanese restaurant, they'll have some teriyaki sauce. It's really good. This is the great value brand from Walmart. So again, it's fairly cheap. It's like a dollar and some a bottle. It's a big enough bottle to last you for a while. The other thing is some soy sauce. Again, a great seasoning to season steak, to season chicken, to season shrimp if you want to. Both of these items do very well when it comes to seasoning meat and you don't have to add a lot of salt because you don't want a lot of sodium. We all have to deal with sodium issues sometimes. The last thing that I recommend you get is what's called Old Bay Seasoning. This will take care of your fish. It'll take care of your shrimp. You can also use it on chicken. But basically, I like to use it on seafood, Old Bay. All right? Anybody got any question on the dishes or the seasonings thus far? Okay, let me continue then. All right, now here is what we're going to use tonight. And this is something that I think is phenomenal that everyone learns. This is called a Ziploc steam bag. This is how you cook your healthy meals every day in the dorm. You get 10 of these in a bag, they're about three bucks, so they're about 30 cents a piece. 
if you can and you're going to college, get your parents or somebody to get you a case of them off of Amazon so you have plenty of them because these things are phenomenal. What these do is they allow you to cook your food in a microwave and get a healthy meal every day, no matter what you cook in it. And I'm gonna give you an example and show you exactly what we're gonna do, all right? So again, let's get started, all right? So inside of there, you will have a bag. That bag will look like this. This looks like a basic Ziploc bag, okay? But it's a steamer bag. And on the front of this steamer bag, you will see broccoli, asparagus, mushrooms, all cauliflower, all your different vegetables. On the other side, it will tell you all of your different meats, chicken, fish, shrimp, hot dogs, whatever, in this bag. It all goes in the bag and it's really easy to use. So let me give you an example of what we're gonna do. I prepared a couple of things to help out ahead of time. So let me slide back a little bit. I've got some chicken tenders here. So what these are, are basic chicken tenders. What I like to do is just cut them into chunks. Okay, I'm getting my napkin here. Put some of this water up. I cut and board, I like to keep clean. So you take a chicken tender, cut it up. You can do a chicken breast. When you're in college, you may not have a lot of money, so you can do a boneless, skinless chicken thigh. You can get a chicken leg and cut the meat off of it. Whatever you can afford to get, right? Because remember, sometimes when you're in college, money is the issue. So you got to learn how to eat economical. So remember, chicken leg, chicken thigh, chicken breast, chicken, whatever you can get, just cut it up. So we're going to take this chicken tender. We're going to cut it up. All right. Everybody sees that? I just cut it into chunks. You can cut it in small pieces, whatever you want to do. Then you take it, put it in the bag. All right. Now, you have two options. You can take a vegetable. I have some broccoli here. I have some asparagus here. I even have some green beans here. All right, for purposes of what we're gonna do, we're gonna use broccoli tonight. So let me clean my cutting board real quick. Flip it over on the other side because I don't want the chicken on my broccoli. All right, now, here's what you do. You take your chicken, you can cook it separately. Let's say you one of those people and you like none of your stuff to touch. You like, I gotta have my chicken in one bag, I gotta have my broccoli in another, whatever, okay? The other thing is, I have some shrimp here as well. I'm gonna show you that too. So let's just set for purposes, you're one of those people that don't want to and you want all your stuff to be individual. You're gonna take this bag, you're gonna take some garlic. Should have opened this earlier. Right? You're going to sprinkle some on your chicken. Just sprinkle it in the bag. Pass it around a little bit. Right? Then, bear with me one moment. I forgot my pepper, but I'm going to add a little pepper to this. This is a pepper grinder. And all I'm going to do is add a little pepper. Right? Okay? I happen to also have cut up a little onion. But you don't have to. Let's say you're not an onion guy. But if you are an onion guy, you just throw a little onion in that bag too. All right? And then me, I like a little teriyaki. This gives me an opportunity like I'm at Benny Hanna's or Kobe Steakhouse or somewhere. So I'm going to take this. These are all brand new. And I'm going to add some of that to the bag too. And I'm just going to add enough so I think I'm happy with it. And I'm going to close this bag up. I'm going to toss it around a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to put it in the microwave. The bag tells you cook with this side up so you know what side. And the good thing is right here it says chicken. Right? And then it tells me if it's a breast, cook three minutes. If it's fresh or if it's frozen, cook five minutes. It tells you if it's two breasts, now, in this case, we're going to assume that this is just a couple pieces of chicken tender. It says three minutes. So I'm going to cook it for three minutes because we want chicken to be done. All right. So we're going to throw it in the bag. 
And we're going to let that chicken cook for three minutes, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is show you a vegetable. Same thing. We're going to get a fresh bag. We're going to take the bag, we're going to open it. We're going to put a little fresh broccoli in here. All right? It's got a line on here, so it even tells you how bag, how much to fill the bag, so that you know you can't overfill it. It cooks it perfectly every time. You take that out. I got a few pieces of asparagus here. Let's throw that in there too. It's not going to hurt, All right? Again. A little seasoning, you can add a little garlic. You can add a little teriyaki to your vegetables. It gives it a great flavor. You can add a little soy sauce to it, whatever. When I'm cooking fresh vegetables, a lot of times I like them to be natural. So what I'll do is I'll just put a little salt and pepper and a little touch of butter, right? Let me show you. So what I like to do is take a little touch of salt this is just regular salt. And remember, you don't want it to be too heavy because remember, guys, when you're cooking, it's better to use a little bit of seasoning and add some more seasoning on the end than it is to over-season it and it be too salty. Because a lot of times people, oh, let me dump some salt and let me dump some salt. And then when you get ready to eat your food, you can't eat it because it's too salty, right? But if you just add a little bit, I get a pinch. Sprinkle it in the bag, right? Just a little bit, depending on how much you got, okay? Then, excuse me one second, I'm going to grab one more thing. I'm going to get a clean knife. I like to take just a little bit of butter. Okay. Just a little bit. Throw it in the bag, too. Now, we're going to seal the bag. Right? You can put some onions in here. You can put some mushrooms in here. You can put some Brussels sprouts. You can put cabbage in here. Any vegetable that you want to cook will steam perfectly in this bag in three minutes or less, okay? Chicken is just about ready. It's got 40 seconds. Once you put it in here, we'll put it in the microwave, we'll steam it, and I'll show you what a complete, a complete plate looks like. Anybody got any questions thus far? Anybody got a favorite food that they like to cook? Again, steak. Uh, steak? Somebody said steak? I did. That's perfect. You can do it too. If you get a steak, let me explain something. What I recommend you do is take the steak, cut it up. Cut it into cubes like I did the chicken. Then if I were you, I'd put a little teriyaki in there, right? Put it in the bag and cook it. The other thing you can do with the steak is this. You can take the steak, cut it up. Use your microwave plate or your microwave dish. Take the steak. Cut it up. You can put it inside the dish the same way. Put the lid on it. Put it in the microwave. Cook it for three minutes at a time. Cook it for three minutes. Stir it. Cook it for another three minutes. Stir it. That way you make sure that the steak doesn't dry out and it stays tender. Because if you just stick it in the microwave and cook it for 10 minutes, it might burn up. It might dry out, right? But if you cook it in three minutes intervals, you will always make sure that it turns out perfect. Let's get the chicken out. All right. So here's our chicken. It's cooked in the bag. You can see it's soaked in the good teriyaki juices. Let me show you what it looks like when we take it out. Now, what we've got is sweet and juicy teriyaki chicken. Everybody see that? See the teriyaki cooked all into the, into the chicken? It's nice and tender. Mmm. Well, that's good too. Okay? Good. Teriyaki chicken. All right. Now, here's your broccoli and asparagus. Same thing. Broccoli and asparagus on the bag. It says cook for a minute and a half. Why? Because if you cook it too long, it'll get too salt. When you're cooking vegetables, you want the nutrients to stay in it. So you cook it for about, about a minute and a half, no more than two minutes. It still has a little crunch to it but it's still fresh. So let me show you something. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is, let's go back to the old favorite. Raymond noodles. 
You can take the teriyaki chicken or just regular chicken. You can take your noodles, put them in the bowl. Now I got a technique to cooking Raymond noodles that I think is really important. I'm gonna explain it to you. I always said, take the bowl and fill it about halfway full of water. Put your noodles in there and cook it according to the instructions. And then wait to the end to get ready to pour your powder, your flavoring on. Because if not, then what happens is the noodles turn out watery. But if you fill your bowl halfway, put your noodles in, let them cook about three minutes, if I remember right. Stir it. Cook it again a couple more minutes, stir it. When the noodles get soft, drain a little bit of the water off, add your flavoring to it. You can also, at that point in time, add your chicken to it. Let it cook in there for a little while. Then you got chicken flavored noodles with real chicken in it, which is better. One of my line brothers used to make beef noodles. He would buy a can of beef and then get the beefy noodles, mix the two in the bowl together and cook them. It was really good, right? So there's a lot of things you can do with Raymond noodles and a 23 cents pack of noodles to make them taste better. All right, let me get the vegetables out. Hang on one moment. All right, so we saw the teriyaki chicken. All right, now here is your bag of steamed vegetables. What I like to do is toss it a little bit because all your good seasonings are in there. Your broccoli is perfectly cooked. You can see the asparagus is perfectly cooked in the bag. It's hot, so be careful, it will burn you. But you can toss it around a little bit because you know it's nothing like a little good, it's like butter on corn. It gives it extra flavor, right? We open the bag up. You see the steam coming out? We pour it out there. And if you see, now we got fresh steamed broccoli and asparagus, perfectly cooked, rightly seasoned, just amount of butter. Put it on the plate. Take your chicken, add it on there. And now guys, what you have is a healthy, non-fried meal that's been perfectly steamed and seasoned just right, okay? You can do this with any vegetable and meat. Again, I have some shrimp right here. If we had a little more time, I'd teach you how to cook the shrimp, but we would do it the same way. Only difference is we put the shrimp in the bag and then we toss it in some Old Bay seasoning, steam it, and it's just like getting fresh boiled shrimp when you go to the seafood place and you get to peel and eat shrimp. It's the exact same way with this. You can cook the shrimp with the shell on it or you can cook the shrimp with the shell off of it. Your choice. Either way, the seasoning will be perfect. And all you're going to do again is put it in a bag like I did. Put the shrimp in, sprinkle some seasoning in it, and then steam it according to however long it says on the bag, and you will have perfect seafood. And again, you can do fish, you can do shrimp, you can do chicken, you can do lots of meats. Again, but the significant thing is this is a healthy meal. This will keep you fed well. It'll keep you from having to worry about too much salt. It'll keep you from having to worry about too much cholesterol because it's not fried, right? Your parents will be happy. You will be healthy during the winter months when it gets cold outside. Everyone will be like, man, what are you doing? You, how are you eating so good? How do you have steamed chicken and fresh broccoli and stuff? It's a secret. Well, the reality is it's all in the bag, guys. These bags are phenomenal. And for people who don't know how to cook, these are a lifesaver. Okay? Anybody have any questions for me? Yeah, I got one. Yes, sir. So, so like, say you're trying to gain weight for a sport or try to stay on a certain weight. What's some foods that are, like, cheap, high in protein, and, like, high in calories? Okay. So, a couple of things you want to do. Number one, I recommend eating beans, like uh, pinto beans. Uh, what's the other with the protein? Uh, for beans, black beans, bean rice, you know, things, car carbs are like pastas and stuff like that. They will help you build up a little bit. Proteins are like the beans, your meats, of course, your protein shakes, those types of things that you mix up and drink. So what you can do is 
you can cook a meal like this and eat a healthy meal and then add a protein shake to it at the same time. So in between your lifting and things like that, that'll help you buff up, right? And that will help you pack it on as well. Peanut butter as well, Brother Carver. Yeah, thank you very much. That's right, peanut butter. One of the things my I wife can't. likes to do, is you can't eat peanut butter? I got an allergy for that. Okay, yeah. All right, then let's That's eat peanut me. butter well. Yeah, so, so what I recommend you doing is still trying to eat a healthy meal, bulk up on calories. If you're trying to bulk up, eat more. What you need to know is how many calories that you need to eat so that you can add additional calories. So if someone would tell you, I mean, you got to eat 1,400 calories a day. If you're trying to bulk up, you need to add some more calories to it and then add the protein to it as well. So I would recommend still eating a healthy meal, but adding a protein shake to it. Eat some bananas, right, in between, those types of things. So walk around, get you some granola bars in between. What they normally say is this, eat at 8 o'clock, have a snack at 10 o'clock. Eat at 12 o'clock, have a snack at 3 o'clock. Eat your dinner. And then before you go to bed, have another snack, right? And somewhere in between there, include some protein shakes and stuff so that you can pack it up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Yes. Uh, I know I appreciate you for eating, but all the stuff I have, like from a, I have a chronic disease, I have Crohn's disease. So is there like any plant-based meals that are on a budget that could have like at Walmart or Target or etc. all of that? Yeah, so, so there's a couple of things you can do. So first of all, remember, you don't have to eat the protein in meat. That's the reason why I wanted to show you how to steam vegetables, right? So as part of your Crohn's disease, can you eat broccoli and asparagus and those types of things? Uh, I can't eat broccoli. I can't. I'm allergic to broccoli. But asparagus and green beans, I can eat that. Okay, perfect. So that's the reason why I wanted to make sure that I showed a balance between a meat and a vegetable. So remember, vegetables are really inexpensive. And so you can go, I bought this bag of green beans. I think it was a dollar or something, right? And it's fresh. Yeah. Now, the other thing you can do is you can stock up on frozen food. So on these bags that I was just showing you, it tells you fresh and frozen. So in case that you're like, hey, I got a freezer, I got certain meals I can only eat, you can still steam them to keep the nutrients in them and have them fresh, right? But green beans, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, uh, cabbage, all of those things. Let me show you something. You can take a head of cabbage. I got one cut up in the refrigerator right now. You can put it inside this dish. You could take a little garlic, a little pepper, a little seasonings, add you maybe two little cuts of butter, put it in here, put the lid, cook it for about two and a half minutes, stir it, cook it another two and a half minutes until it's tender, and you will have some of the best cabbage that you've ever had. The other thing that I want to tell you specifically, since you're talking about vegetables, let me show you one thing real quick. And Kevin, I'll get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me just show one thing. Broths. Chicken broth. Broths, broths are really good for cooking when you don't want to use water because they add flavor. So you could take some chicken broth, pour it in the bag a little bit, not a lot, because remember the bags steam themselves. But you could add a little chicken broth or you could take the microwave dish, fill it about a fourth of the way with a good chicken broth, add your vegetables to it, a little touch of butter. I always say garlic powder because it doesn't have salt in it. It gives you flavor without salt, right? So then you can season and add more seasoning if you need to, but you don't over salt it in the beginning. But you take a little chicken broth, you take your fresh vegetable, you add your little garlic, a little touch of butter, you put it in the microwave for about two and a half minutes, stir it, same thing, it'll turn out perfect. And what I would recommend you doing, if possible, is to try to get you some rice packs, like some mm -hmm. chicken flavored rice and some chicken flavored noodles, or the old fashioned favorite, and yep. add this to the vegetables, and you can't go wrong. You'll be healthy, and you'll have a good meal every night. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. No problem. My pleasure. Anyone else have a question for me before Brother Burnett kicks me off the bridge? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Hey, if you like it, tell everybody again. And, Kevin, if you want me to come back and teach spaghetti and beef tips and all that in the microwave, let me know. I'd be more than happy to, okay? I appreciate you, Brother Carver.